Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Carver, and welcome to the series where I teach you how to build a game in Python. Today's video is going to be quite similar to the last one. We're just going to be doing some base classes again, but we're going to be controlling the UI elements this time, or creating the UI elements, I should really say. Uh, so we're going to be having text that is displayed on the screen, and also text that you can click. We're going to be doing both of those uh, in this video. There is quite a lot to it, which is why it's a separate video in itself. Um, but you know, having UI is really useful and it's, it's just better we get out of the way now so we can do the menu in the next video. Of course, if you find the video helpful at any point, then consider liking it to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. And we're back in our init.py file for the final time in a while. Uh, oh, that actually rhymed. Would you look at that? Uh, because we need to create one more file. This is going to be the last one we create for a good long time. Um, if we even need to create another one at all. I don't know how I'm going to get controller stuff to work exactly. I do know how to get it to work, I just don't know how I'm going to do it in a series, so we might have an extra video for that, but beyond that I can't think of another reason why we'd need uh, an extra file. So, no, we're not going to create a new folder. We're going to create a new file, ui.py, um, and we're going to, you know, import pygame as pg, as we have done before, and we don't need to do anything else. So we just need to create our base text class. And there is a lot to this one. Uh, so you're gonna have to be a little patient. Uh, we're gonna have slots equals underscore body, underscore color. I am British, I'm spelling it with a U. That's the correct spelling. Uh, <laughs> X, uh, Y, W, H, size, align, uh, font, whoops. Uh, font and renders. So our text object is going to have native support for multi-line drawing. Pygame doesn't really include that by default, uh, but we're going to make it so, you know, uh, a backslash n is a new line, essentially, because it's not really that hard to do. Uh, so we're going to have our def in it, and we need to pass in the body. So the body is going to be the actual text that's put in. The x and y positions the size of the text, in, you know, in like you would change in word or whatever uh, a line which we're going to set to top left uh, and color which we're going to set by default to 255 255 255 so both of these are default arguments obviously and then we're going to have self dot underscore body equals body dot splits uh, by that so this creates a list uh, there is a reason I'm putting an underscore in the front of it and I'll show you that in a second uh, same reason for the color as well uh, pg.color.color. Unfortunately, you know, American Library there are no aliases for the superior and correct spelling of color. So we're left without a U here and a U here. You know, I can feed my Britishness in there somewhere. I can infiltrate the barriers eventually. Uh, I might submit PR if I can. I don't know. Most of the library is written in C, so we'll see. I don't really know much C. Um, we'll, just, we'll see if I even need it. I said C way too many times in that sentence. Uh, what I've been doing that, I've been you know defining the x, y uh, width and height. Width and height, which is set at zero for now, because we're going to be adding them later. Uh, so because we need to add them dynamically, we can't like rely on Pygame systems because we're doing multi-line stuff. And we're going to have self dot font, which we create so pg dot font dot font uh, dot slash assets slash fonts slash and in this case, we're using DK Lemon Yellow Sun .otf. Of course, you can use whatever font you want. It doesn't matter. We're going to pass in the size. You can use system installed fonts. So you can pass in like a sys font here. Although, of course, you are relying on the font being installed on that system uh, when it when it runs. And if you're you know if you're distributing the game, you can't really rely on that. So you can just pass it in as a file, and it's perfectly fine. Self .renders is an empty list. And then we're going to do self.render, uh, which we will create a little bit later. For now, we need to do some more properties. So we have property, def, but the position. You know, we've done all this before. Uh, return, whoops, it is return self.x, self.y. Uh, and then we need another property for the body. So this is where we actually, you know, like compile everything together. So we have um, print, not, not print, uh, return. Uh, that dot join self dot underscore body. So, uh, so if we ever need uh, the raw text back, we can just use text dot body. However, when we render it, we are going to need it as a list, uh, which is why I'm doing it this way around. 
Uh, and then you have the body dot setter. We only need a setter. So def body uh, self value. Oops, self and then value. And then we do self dot underscore body uh, equals value dot split underscore n. And then you know when we uh, update the uh, the body text, we want to render it as well. So we're going to have a render here. Yeah, you know, just a nice little shortcut. It basically just means that we don't have to call render all the time in our text if we ever want to like update anything. It just calls it automatically for us. Uh, so we create another property this time for the color, and then we return in in this one. It's just a bit simpler. We just return the self color. It's more the setter that we need. Uh, so color dot setter, and f uh, color again self value. Essentially what we're doing here is we're just making sure that the color um, is set to uh, you know, a color object because it just makes it easier and more consistent to work with if we ever need you know, specific values out of it. Um, but if the, uh, the value of, I can't spell instance, there we go. Uh, if the value of value, or if the type of value, sorry, is already a color object, then we don't need to do anything. Uh, come on, there we go. Uh, then we can just do, you know, self dot uh, color equals value. Uh, otherwise, uh, self dot color equals p pg dot color dot color, and then value because it can take a tuple, it can take all it wants. Uh, I think it could take a hex string as well, but don't quote me on it. I don't remember. And now we actually need to, you know, render the text. So we do def render self self dot renders dot clear because we don't want to you know add extra stuff to lists if we already have it. And we want to reset the self dot w equals zero and self dot height equals zero so they don't get offset either. And then for i align in enumerate uh, self underscore body, uh, we want to we want to create uh, first create a surface for our font. So we do self dot font dot render uh, line true self dot color. Uh, so you know we're just rendering the line uh, anti aliasing. This one is so you can set it to false if you don't want anti aliasing. Uh, we're setting it to the color, and then we do convert alpha um, to convert. I don't really know exactly what this is doing, but it it adds like hundreds upon hundreds of frames per second. <laughs> Uh, upon not doing it. it, it like converts into a specific way that's like way better for SDL. Um, you can just do convert as well, but you will end up with a bit of a background. It is more uh, performant if you do that, but um, actually getting rid of the background color is a nightmare. It doesn't really work properly. So I just always use convert alpha, it, it does the job. It does like 95% of it, so it's fine. So now we want to update the width. So we want to set the the width to be, you know, the width or um, the width of the surface, whichever is higher. So if um, so, if the second line is longer than the first line, then it will use surface dot get width. However, if the first line is longer than the second line, then when it, it renders the second line, it will just keep the width as the width because it's the widest line. Basically, it just sets the width to the widest line, pretty much. And uh, we want self dot h equals just surface dot get height. Like we don't um, really care much about. Actually, we could probably do that last. Oh no, it's, it's plus equals. Never mind. Uh, so for each line of text, we add the height of it on. Uh, and then we get the rect. Uh, so surf. Oh, sorry, surface dot get uh, rect. Then we align it uh, and position it. So here we want to do a set atra uh, rect uh, self dot align. So basically, the self atra is is kind of doing this uh, equals whatever. Uh, but if you have a string, you can use the set atra, and this allows you to actually pass in a variable name uh, here in this align. So in this case, the default is top left, and it will get the top left variable. There's also like center and I think it's. Um, you have middle, uh, bottom, like a bottom left, bottom right, middle left, middle right, center, middle, something. I don't remember the whole list. There's it's, it's some weird names in there. 
But essentially, we want to set uh, whichever position we want to align from. So this is kind of like the anchor in a way, I suppose. Uh, we want to set this to self.x and then self.y plus uh, surface.get height, the height of the, the actual surface itself, uh, times by the index of it. Um, so we want to make sure that the line goes below the current one. If you don't have this times i, it will go, it, like all the lines will just sit on top of each other, so this just offsets the y-axis. Um, so, you know, we can actually do it. Obviously for the first one, it'll just put it wherever, because, you know, we're timesing it by zero, so this will just get cancelled out, and then it'll times it by one, times it by two, just make sure it actually goes line by line um, appropriately. And then that is three brackets at the end. And then we just do self.renders dot append uh, and then uh, surface rect um, and then there is a specific reason that we store a list of tuples I will get to that uh, in this video before we, uh, before we end it off uh, but there is and we also don't need this bit anymore uh, but there is one more class that we need to do and we need to do uh, interactive UI so a text button um, so there's not much else we need to add to this because it gets most of its stuff from text already uh, so we can just do that. And then we have our slots as well. We did do the slots for the text, didn't we? Yeah, we did. So the slots equals text dot slots. So we want to make sure it has the correct slots. Uh, and then we also need action and we need hovering uh, as well. Because uh, we're going to do some fancy stuff. We're going to make it so it reacts to being clicked as well as reacting to being hovered over. Um, so that's pretty cool. But obviously we'll we'll kind of see that in action next video rather than this one so you know you have your def in it and then we're going to do self we're going to pass the action so this is a function uh so you just pass a function object through body x y you know size align it's the same as the other one for the rest of it and then color equals 255 255 255 and then we have super dot in it uh and then body i always go to put self in there self align uh, I don't know why I've been using super dot in it for literally like three or four years and uh, I always I always got to put self in it and it's wrong and you need to get that habit but yeah that obviously performs the init for the text so we don't need to do all that again we just need to set the self dot action equals action and then self dot hovering uh, equals false because you know we're not hovering over it by default uh, to begin with so now we need a, a helper method to detect if it's under the mouse uh, so self and then pause. So this is the position of the mouse that we're going to be passing through. We're going to be getting that from the event. Um, but what we do here is we do return self dot renders uh, one dot collide point uh, pause. Uh, and this just checks if our um, you know if a particular render is colliding with the mouse itself. Um, so yeah. Um, and then this returns true if the mouse is on top of, of, of something, so you can see if it's like hovering. And then we do some events, which we do have to call manually inside the uh, the event handlers, but it's fine. Self, and then we're just going to pass args and quags in there, just in case we need to. Um, we're not really going to be using args and quags on the hovers, but I think it's useful to have, I think, potentially. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, if not self dot body dot, and this is kind of uh, this is quite custom with with this. So in mine, uh, with my font, the plus is a little sun icon. Um, so I'm going to do it so um, where if you hover over it, it's going to put a sun at either side. Um, and for that, I'm just going to put a plus at either side. So this is custom for me. Uh, your on hovers on on hovers and on clicks. Well, your on click is this will be the same, but your hover and on hover might be different. So you might want to change the color, for example, or you might want to you know set the the text to uppercase or something like that. Uh, but with my one in particular, you know, I'm going to be adding the plus character to either side, uh, as you can see. So if it doesn't already start with a plus, otherwise it will just loop infinitely. <laughs> um, plus self dot body and that gets obviously you know, you know the whole thing um so you know if there is like multi-line text and it does hover you know you'll have the thing on the starting plus on one line the ending plus on other i'm not too fussed about that you know i'm not going for a perfect uh perfect thing in this series you can um 
in your game that you're going to be building actually properly, uh, probably, I don't know how much you're just experimenting with it, you can obviously make it look a bit nicer uh, in the finishing touches. Except set self.hovering equals true, uh, just so we have something to check against in the event, uh, otherwise it gets you know a bit difficult to tell. And then we want a self.render because we want to you know render the new text. So having this self.render call manually saves us from having to call uh, or saves us from having to render the text every frame. So we just render it when we update it. Um, and that saves literally hundreds of frames <laughs> uh, a second. Yeah, text rendering is one of Pygame's slowest things. Um, it is a lot slower to render text and draw text than it is to just draw a simple image onto the screen. So reducing, I suppose like caching in a way, uh, reducing the number of times it actually needs to be redrawn or at least re-rendered, um, you know, is a huge help. Uh, so def on unhover uh, self, and then we're going to pass in the args and quags. I, I don't know if you need these, but whatever. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Self.body equals self.body. And then, you know, we're just going to strip the, uh, the pluses away. Uh, self hovering equals false, and then of course self render, and then def on click, uh, self args, and then quags. Uh, you are actually gonna need the args and quags for this one because you're gonna be running the action, uh, and then you're gonna need to pass any args and quags that that action like expects to it. So you're gonna need to pass it to the on click as well. Um, of course, you can do other stuff in here if you want. Um, I can't really think of what other stuff you would need to do. I guess it's, well, actually, if you wanted to play a sound, actually, you would put it here uh, as well, which you are going to be dealing with sound at some point, but just a lot, lot later in the series. Uh, and then one final little touch, we need to come back into the window. And uh, because this blit isn't sufficient, we need to create a separate one for rendering text uh, or blitting text. They are two different things, I should point out. So we have uh, self and then text. This is a text object. Uh, so for r in text.renders, so basically just for line in the, you know, the text, uh, self.service.blitz, uh, and then we can just do star r, uh, because it's expecting a surface and a position. Our you know text.renders has a surface and a position and a tuple. We can just do that and it'll work. So that is everything. Um, next video we'll be able to see, you know, the first bits of our hard work, especially the last two uh, videos. So make sure you tune in for that. That's all I wanted to talk about for now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. But yeah, with that, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month, and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time, where you know we start actually creating the main menu and we get some responsive clickable things uh, and everything looks all nice and stuff um, so I'll see you for that